weak economic data, the credit downgrade, and wild market movements. Philip Swagel sees the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a long one. And the Fed, he says, has done enough. Philip has worked at the Federal Reserve. He's worked at the Treasury and at the White House under President George W. Bush. He is now a professor in international economic policy at the University of Maryland and is with us this morning from Washington, D.C. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Thanks we for having me on. Thanks for being here. We also have Michael McKee, our resident economics guru, to join us for this conversation. Philip, the Fed has made its big move, and now you say it needs to step aside. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Fed has kept interest rates low and is going to keep them low for another two years. There's not a lot more the Fed can do. They can go into QE3, but we see the dissent within the Fed, and it's just not clear that uh, that is warranted. And the problems facing the country are not fundamentally that interest rates are too high. Philip, this is Michael. Uh, the Fed's action, if it pushes down rates on the long end, could have a big effect in the mortgage market if it pushes mortgage rates down. But do you think the regulatory environment is such that people are going to be able to refinance and, and buy homes if mortgage rates fall? Yeah, I mean, there will be some refinancing activity, and we've seen uh, a pickup of that again. But yes, the regulatory uh, environment is, is affecting banks. I mean, banks don't want mortgages put back to them, and they don't want the whole sort of... Uh, the, the climate with uh, foreclosures and the different changes in policies. So I, I think in some sense, it's not just interest rates now, it's all the other things causing uncertainty in the economy. Philip, take us into the mind of the FOMC. We know there were three dissenters there. It's been a long time, a long time since the FOMC has been as divided as that. Why say anything at all? We know there was a stock market reaction, but it's not like the Fed told us much that people didn't already know. Uh, if they weren't talking to the stock market, who were the policymakers trying to communicate with? No, I, I think you're right. It's interesting, the, the dissents. Uh, in some sense, you have just different views within the FOMC. I mean, you have the, the, the doves, in a sense, uh, including the chairman, saying, look, the economy is weak, fiscal policy is at a standstill, and maybe even worse, fiscal policy is adding uncertainty, and we're the ones who can act, and we have to act. Then you have the, the hawks, the dissenters, and others, who say, look, this is not our job. We have done our job. Now it's for Congress and the White House. We can't do their job for them. It, it's just two different worldviews, and you saw that that expressed as unprecedented uh, dissent. And Philip, QE2 ignited a firestorm in Washington. How will this play out politically for Ben Bernanke? Yeah, I mean, this is very much a middle ground. So it's communication, it's not QE3. QE3 would be a huge firestorm, as you said. He's not there yet. Philip, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Glad you could stick around for that last question. Philip Swagel of the University of Maryland.